Hello, I'm Aaron Pabone, and welcome to Last Week in Gaming, the show that gives you a summary of last week's gaming news. This episode is for the week of January 31st through February 6, 2016. Remember, if you have any new tips from the world of gaming, you can send them to us using this hashtag, LWIGJN, or send us a message to GameJournalismNetwork at gmail.com. Todd Howard, the director of Bethesda's Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Skyrim and Fallout 3 and 4, will receive the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 16th Annual Game Developers' Choice Awards in March. Other GDCA Lifetime Achievement Award winners include Peter Molyneux, Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi, Bioware co-founders Dr. Greg Zeschuk and Dr. Ray Mizuka, the father of PlayStation Ken Kutaragi, and game developer Hideo Kojima. In other news related to Hideo Kojima, the organizers of 2016's DICE Summit announced that Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro will provide the keynote address at this year's DICE Summit. Kojima and del Toro will talk about their creative processes and visions. Kojima and del Toro were initially going to collaborate on a new Silent Hill game, but plans for that were cancelled when Konami and Kojima split. The Electronic Frontier Foundation recently reported on a bill under consideration from Maryland's state legislator. The bill, which is modeled off of a bill passed in California in 2014, would protect the rights of consumers that post negative reviews online. This comes in response to businesses that have been including and or hiding gag clauses in their contracts, preventing customers or consumers from leaving negative reviews. If you're a Destiny player, Bungie wants to know why you have been playing lately. Bungie has been sending questionnaires to Destiny players. This comes after Pete Parsons was announced as the new CEO of Bungie. Parsons made it his personal mission to improve on Destiny. Mitomo, Nintendo's first smartphone game, will be released in March in North America and European markets. This was announced at a Nintendo shareholders meeting. Nintendo also announced that the pre-registration for Mitomo will start on February 17th. Potential Mitomo users will be able to use their existing Nintendo network IDs or use social media and email to sign up. Users that register will also get a special bonus for the My Nintendo Rewards program, the successor to the Club Nintendo program. Also announced was MiPhoto, an in-game photo sharing app. Mitomo will be for both iOS and Android devices. Leigh Alexander has decided to step down as the editor-in-chief of Offworld.com and has also announced that she's leaving gaming journalism. Alexander made the announcement on her blog in which she talked about working for Offworld and her previous work in gaming journalism. Additionally, in her blog post, she claimed that Offworld had had over 750,000 visitors a month generating millions of page views. However, this claim has been under heavy scrutiny. Here's a clip from YouTube commentator Monday Matt. But if you head over to uh, SimilarWeb.com and you take a look at the analytics for Offworld, you can see that the uh, monthly engagement, the average monthly engagement was 25,000 views. The average time on site was 21 seconds, right? And if you look back to six months, July 1st, they had 35,000 average, average, and then it hits uh, November drops to 30, December drops to 25. And it's only probably gone down from there. So her saying that they're crushing it with 750,000 page views in a month, I can't find it, at least in the last six months. All right. So if you're talking 700, three quarters of a million views down to 35,000 at the height of your average monthly traffic over the course of the last few months uh, is pretty, pretty goddamn sad. Alexander is no stranger to the criticism of her work and her work ethic. On the journalism reference resource website, deepfreeze.it, Alexander has the most entries. In 2014, Alexander spearheaded the infamous Gamers Are Dead articles while she was the editor-at-large for Game of Sutra. In her article, she called gamers obtuse shitslingers, wailing hyper-consumers, childish internet arguers, and encouraging the industry to shun them as consumers. Alexander is also known for her choice in journalism ethics involves favoring those that she likes. This is a clip from her appearance from XOXO Fest in 2014. Um, in addition to regularly writing and speaking about feminism, um, I reject as much as possible conventional models for video games writing. Um, you know, you can't be a female columnist or like a woman who writes her opinions without people making referendums on your personality or speculating about your motives or even your mental health. So I just double down on doing personal work. Um, <laughs> whether I'm doing in interviews, criticism, anything, no pretense of being unbiased. I write about the things I'm interested in, the creators I care about, and the trends that I want to see succeed. Sorry, that's the conspiracy. Um, <laughs> thank you. 
<laughs> and in our last bit of gaming news from last week is also an opinion from our end, so here's your opinion alert. Game developer Eric Tarantinsky, the mind behind Ant Simulator, released a video saying that the development for Ant Simulator has been halted. Tarantinsky claimed in the video that his co-workers on the project, who are also his friends of 11 years, have embezzled the money that would be used on the project. Quote, I recently found out that my ex-business partners were secretly stealing company money. They had secretly spent the overwhelming majority of both our Kickstarter money and the Ant Simulator investment money on liquor, restaurants, bars, and even strippers. GJN is reporting on this not because of the claims and accusations made from his video, but how other members of the gaming press reported on this. When this story broke, a slew of gaming websites did not interview Tarantinsky and only reported on the video that he released and published similar stories with headlines saying that Ant Simulator cancelled after developers blow crowdfunded money on strippers and booze. Only one gaming publication reached out to Cherensinski for an interview, and that was Polygon. And after that interview, many publications that initially reported on the situation updated their articles with quotes from the interview from Polygon. Now, it's not a bad thing that they quoted the interview. Many journalists do this with proper crediting. But the key issue is that many of those that wrote about this did not reach out for their own interview. The biggest issue is the fact that only one gaming journalist, Mike Futter from Game Informer, reported on both sides of the story. He interviewed Tarantinsky's business partners, Tyler Montz and Devin Staley. In that article, they responded that the claim is 100% BS. You can read Futter's full article in a link in the description box below. And for all of those that have barely done their work on this story, I urge you to attend Airplay 2. We're going to have a panel on Gaming Journalism 2.0, and hopefully you might learn a thing or two from that panel. That was last week on Mayor Pabone. Check back next week for more gaming news, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to GGN's YouTube channel. Remember, if you have any news tips from the world of gaming, you can send them to us using this hashtag, LWIGJN, or send us a message to GameJournalismNetwork at gmail.com. Also, check out GGN's official website at GameJournalism.net for more gaming news and Airplay 2 updates.